Hello friends, this video on neat evolution is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Now when it comes to dating fossils, that how do we estimate the age looking at the fossils? Now there are various methods which are used for dating fossils. So the first method is radioactive clock method. The name itself is interesting. So why is it called radioactive clock? So that's because clock is something which tells us time. So basically this method will also tell us the time or the age of the fossils. Radioactive because this method is based upon the radioactive uh, behavior of certain nuclei. So in this method what is done is the age of the rock is estimated by calculating the amount of lead that is present in the rock. Okay so let's understand what is it. Now it has been found that uranium is a radioactive nuclei. Now when I say radioactive nuclei it means that there are certain elements which have a tendency to give out radioactive emission which emits radioactive rays. So uranium is one such element and it has been found by calculation that 1 million gram of uranium produces 17,600 grams of lead in one year. So this is one calculation which has already been done that if you have 1 million gram of uranium it will produce 17,600 grams of lead in one year as a, process, as a part of radioactivity because in radioactivity what happens the element like in this case uranium undergoes radioactivity so it continues to release some electrons or alpha particles or beta particles so it kind of emits some particles so as a result what happens over a period of time uranium gets converted into to some other element like in this case uranium is getting converted into lead now since we know this part we know this calculation so based on the conversion of unstable radioactive nuclei into stable nuclei over a fixed period we can actually estimate the age of the rock for example uh, here in this case uranium is an unstable nuclei so it tries to get converted to a stable nuclei which is lead now let's say that you have been given a fossil so what you do you find out the amount of lead that is present in the rock so if you have found out the amount of lead that is present in the rock so you can very easily doing a back calculation from here for example now if Let's say that you found out that X grams of lead is present in a particular sample of rock. So what you can do, you can easily calculate it in this way that 17,600 grams of lead is formed from 1 million grams of uranium in one year. So X grams of uh, lead would have been formed in how many years? So doing that back calculation you could have find out the number of years it would have taken for uranium to get converted into x grams of lead right so with that calculation you can actually calculate the time frame so once you have calculated the time frame you can actually backtrack the age of that rock so this method is also known as radioactive clock is one name another name is clock of the rock so clock is the time so the so this method tells the time of the rock or uh, the how long before how many years this rock existed. So this is our first method. Now there is another method called radioactive carbon method which is also called radioactive carbon dating. So here age of fossils containing organic material. Organic material means carbon containing. So age of fossils containing organic material can be estimated by measuring the amount of carbon-14 in a sample of the fossil. What is carbon-14? Now carbon, the element carbon exists in two isotopes, C12 and C14. Now C14 is unstable and it undergoes radioactive decay. So how does it undergo radioactive decay? So in the radioactive decay of C14, so this carbon-14 gets converted into nitrogen wherein it releases an electron and an antineutrino particle. So this is how the decay of carbon-14 to nitrogen takes place. So here carbon-14 is the unstable nuclei and nitrogen is the stable nuclei. Now, when you look at this decay of carbon-14, it has been found that half-life of carbon-14 is 
5730 years approximately so what do we mean by half life half life means the time period after which half of a given sample of carbon 14 will decay so this is a fixed value so half life of carbon 14 will always be around 5730 years now what how do we calculate in this method so in this method first of all we find out the amount of carbon 14 which is present in a sample of the fossil now if amount of carbon 14 is measured in a dead plant or animal sample maybe a piece of wood or a fragment of bone then it can be used to determine when the plant or animal died because how much carbon 14 is present in the soil let's say that you found out that x grams of carbon 14 is present in that particular sample now you know that half life of carbon 14 is these many years so basically in these many years half of the carbon gets i mean kind of gets converted so therefore you can find out that x grams of carbon will get converted in how many years so like that you can find out the time duration in which that much amount of carbon 14 would have you know kind of um, undergo radioactive decay so with that you can calculate the age of the fossils the third method is potassium argon method which is also written as kar dating so K is for potassium, AR is for argon. So here age estimation is done by calculating the content ratio of argon to potassium in a rock or mineral. Now this is a very common method because potassium is a very common element found in many materials and minerals and rocks. Now if you look at the decay of potassium, it has been found that K40 that is K40 isotope of potassium, it decays into argon 40. So that means potassium represents the unstable nuclei and argon represents the stable one. So now what we do in this method? In this method we, we determine the amount of potassium that is remaining in the sample because potassium is gradually getting converted into argon. So first we have to find out the amount of potassium that is remaining in the sample and also the amount of argon that is present in the sample because this potassium is actually getting converted to argon, right? So find out the uh, content of both potassium and argon in the sample. Now we already know the half life of potassium. So knowing the half life of potassium, amount of potassium in the sample and amount of argon in the sample, we can very easily find out the time taken for the conversion of potassium to argon. So if you calculate the time taken for the conversion, that basically helps you to estimate the age of the fossil. And finally, the fourth method, which is the electron spin resonance method. So this is a very efficient method, it is also known as ESR dating, ESR is electron spin resonance. So here we do not take help of any particular uh, radioactive isotope, like in the previous methods we, somewhere we used carbon-14, somewhere we used potassium-40, but in this case uh, the advantage of this method is that uh, this method can be used to date newly formed materials, so even the newly formed materials uh, age estimation can be done. So here age estimation is done by measuring the amount of unpaired electrons in crystalline structures that were previously exposed to natural radiation. So here the entire measurement concept is based on the amount of unpaired electrons which is present and that is why the method is called electron spin resonance. Now, uh, the process of radioactivity causes the negatively charged electrons to move from ground state to higher energy levels. So let's say that if you have the valence band somewhere here, so and if you have a conduction band somewhere here. So what happens uh, during radioactivity electrons they jump from the valence band to the conduction band or you can say they jump from ground state to higher energy levels. Now after some time electrons recombine with holes in the valence band. Now, few electrons get trapped between these energy levels, like they are neither on the higher energy levels nor at the ground state. So they get trapped somewhere in between. And these trapped electrons, they correspond to the magnitude of the electron spin resonance signal. So this is how the technique is. So we will not get into the detail of how electron spin resonance method works. But this is just to tell you that it happens with the help of the electrons. Basically the amount of unpaired electrons in the crystalline structures. 
The advantage of this method is that it can be used to date newly formed materials or previously heated rock. So this is the advantage of electron spin resonance method over radioactive carbon dating because carbon dating those methods are used only for um, very old fossils like which were formed long long time ago. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com for free quality education. You can learn with a simple four step learning process wherein you can watch video lessons, you can ask your questions, you can refer notes and you can take a free online test. We have content for class 6 to 12 on physics, chemistry, mathematics and biology along with practical videos. So please subscribe to our channel for daily updates. Thank you.